In this demonstration, I'll show you how to use implicit differentiation to tackle higher order derivatives. I have this question for you. Find y prime and y double prime. This suggests the first derivative and this suggests the second derivative. So we'll start off with the first derivative. Given that, we can start off by differentiating the left and the right side, dy over dx. And the right side goes to 0. And this left side, well, we're going to differentiate this and we're going to differentiate that. So by differentiating this, we end up with 3x to the power of 2. And since this equation is in terms of x, uh, you use the power rule and you end up with this. And similarly, when you differentiate y to the power of 3, you end up with 3y squared. But this time you end up with dy over dx. And this is y prime. So the next step is to isolate for y prime. That's not hard to do. We'll bring this term over negative 3x squared. And also, on the left side, we're left with the following. So we have to divide both sides by 3y to the power of 2. 3y to the power of 2. And the 3s cancel out, leaving us with strictly x squared over y squared and the negative on the top. So that is the first derivative. We will move on now to the second derivative. y double prime. And we will differentiate the following. And you'll notice that you have a quotient now. You have a fraction. So you'll have to use the quotient rule. And in case you forgot, the quotient rule uses this pattern. Let's say we have two functions, f and, Q, f and g. You, you multiply g by the derivative of f, and then you subtract the derivative of g multiplied to the function f over g to the power of 2. So when we take the second derivative, this term right here becomes squared. And we're going to leave this term, we're going to call this term g, just so that we don't get confused. We're going to call this term f. And we're going to leave g function the way it is. I'm going to close in brackets, not to be confused. And over here, we end up with negative 2x. I did the power rule here. I brought this 2 down. I subtracted that by 1. And then we're going to subtract the derivative of g, which will be 2y, and since we're t since it's in terms of x and we're taking the derivative here, we're using implicit differentiation, this becomes y prime. There's a y prime right beside it. And over here, we end up with negative x squared. So let's simplify this statement a little bit. I mean, simplification is optional, but r recall that y prime, if you, if you remember from up here, y prime is equal to something. So let's replace y prime with, with what it is equal to. So we have negative 2xy squared. All I've done is simplify this part here. And over here, you end up with positive, because you have these two negatives, positive 2y negative x squared y squared. And also, you have this x squared over here. And on the bottom, you have y to the power of 4. So this is ideal for us because we can now simplify this even further, this row. And one way you can do that is you can cancel out one of these y's with the y here. And similarly, this x squared and this x squared, they can come together. So here's how I see it, negative 2xy to the power of 2 minus 
this minus is coming from here, 2x to the power of 4 over y. Now, many students will stop right there, but I see potential in this question. And the reason why I do is because if I multiply the bottom and the top by y, simply y, what happens to the top is, well, this y multiplies to both of these terms, and you end up with negative 2xy to the power of 3. And this term multiplied to this term gives us negative 2x to the power of 4. Pretty much we got rid of this fraction here. And on the bottom we have y to the power of 5. And you can even go further by factoring out some important parts of both of these terms. Notice, both of them have a negative 2 in common. Take a look at the original equation. Notice how bo uh, both these terms have a negative 2 in common, so pull out a negative 2. They both have an x in common, so pull out that x. And you're left with, just to increase the space here, and you're left with y to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 3 over y to the power of 5. Now, the reason why I went up to see what this, what the original equation was, well, because the original equation said that x to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3 is equal to 1. So, this goes to 1. So your final, final answer is negative 2x over y to the power of 5. So there you have it. That is how to use implicit differentiation when it comes to finding the higher derivatives or the second derivative. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.